My primary swing thought depends on the club, but my swing thought with my driver is just try not to overswing, basically, so keep it short. With the irons, it's uh, keep my left arm straight. Keep it very simple, very connected and around me. When I get quick, a lot of things go wrong. Swing and let it go. He may be small in stature, but Matt Fitzpatrick plays a big game. The plucky, determined Englishman has always been known for his gutsy game and his stellar short game skills. But a commitment to adding speed and distance has propelled him up the world rankings and to a major championship. Well, he does not hang around. Over the ball, a couple of quick waggles and off it goes. We were all amazed at the country club last year how long Fitzpatrick had become because he'd worked specifically on his speed. That is going to be in perfect position for him to go for it. Excellent tee shot. Let's see how he does it. At five foot ten, Matt Fitzpatrick, not as tall as most, so he has to stand up to the ball a little bit more. So you see there's a little less flexion in the knees than you'll see typically on the PGA Tour. He still, however, does a great job of bending from the hips, so he does get some good spine tilt there. He also allows the arms to hang out a little bit more, which in my opinion allows him to hit a little bit more from the inside of the golf ball, which is the first way on a better swing path and certainly a better angle of attack to gain a little bit more ball speed as you increase club head speed. So now there is a line on the shaft at address. Most golfers, when they take that club away, will get the club working along that line. Certain guys will be a little higher. Matt Fitzpatrick, he tends to want to drag the club inside of that line a touch more. And so as a result, he gets his arms really deep. Let's see how he does that. So the club moves away, little trigger in the body. Now his hips guide the action. Look at that rotation there. And the arms just follow. And when the left arm is parallel with the ground, you notice how he's got that shaft angle a little more horizontal or flat in comparison to where it was at address. From there, as he continues to wind, the arms swing up, but they're deeper. They're more in behind than most. A little lifting in the arms, and you can see now, because of the way he holds it, there's just that touch of cupping in the wrist. That's out of the ordinary for the PGA Tour as well. You'll see golfers up there have a flatter lead wrist or even a flexed or bowed wrist, not Fitzpatrick. Now as we start him down to the same height where he was going back, left arm parallel with the ground, right there, look at the magic that he has just shown us. See that angle of that shaft? It's matching the angle of the shaft at address. So whereas most folks will say he's coming over the top, all Fitzpatrick is doing is getting the club back on a similar plane to where he was at address. So now, it's all systems go. His body starts to unwind, the chest leads, look at the hips opening up, the hands are getting back in front, there's that slightly more inside approach, and he has the shaft right back on the money with his club face looking directly over the back of the golf ball. Now, you'll see the legs push up, you'll see the body open up, Look at the arms freewheel. He slings the club head at the ball, through the ball, accelerating, gaining extra miles per hour, and certainly gaining more speed off the tee. Picked up that tee quickly. Did all that speed training to try to get longer, and it's really paid off. Look at that coil on that swing. Fitzpatrick. Well, a quick tee pickup, usually an indication of perfection, and that is pretty much ideal. Okay, good swing there from Matt. Does have the accuracy. Oh, that looked nice, huh? On a line. Because of that, you've seen that extra roll down there. Here's the caddy view of Matt Fitzpatrick with a driver in the hand. Now, the first thing to do if you want to gain more speed is make sure you organized pre-swing. And let's look through the fundamentals. First off, his hold on the golf club. That glove hand, the leading hand, his left, is way more cranked over the club than one would typically advocate. That's a strong grip. It's going to lead to a more closed club face. But do you notice how the right hand, the non-glove hand, is turned over that, almost in a butterfly-style grip? 
I see a lot of powerful golfers holding the club in that fashion because the right hand neutralizes the left some and so it doesn't get that face too shut. Then secondly, and I love this, I would advocate this to all golfers. Notice how the front foot is turned outward some. Notice how the trail foot is straight up. That is very Ben Hogan-esque. And that straight up foot at a 90 degree angle to the target line is gonna provide a nice brace for the hips to turn against. Now, I also love a trigger because we've got to move this club from zero miles an hour to maximum speed at club head. So starting away from the ball, I love a trigger and watch what Matt Fitzpatrick does. See that little movement in the hips? You'll see the hips kind of bump to the right and then the knees follow a little bit and then widen. We'll just move that back and forth. So before the club goes, see the movement of the body? He's shifting pressure into that trail side. So he's pre-setting, almost pre-loading the movement of the body. So the trigger sets him in motion. Watch the hips go, then the arms follow. Now watch how the hips rotate and they're almost driving the swing of the arms. Look at that big hip rotation over there. It's helped him turn farther with the upper body. So he's got the maximum out there whilst not giving up this angle in the right leg. He's got a brace he's rotating against. So wonderful trigger, wonderful, powerful backswing. Now I want to show you this. Imagine that the insteps of his feet are kind of like boundaries. Now watch how Matt like you saw the trigger with the hips to start the backswing, watch how the hips lead, but they never ever break through that forward circle. Watch the trigger. No forward shifting. See, just pure rotation. Once again, the hips, the knees, the ankles are leading the action. And one more time, right to that spot. Watch the hips move and cut him off over there. Look at how powerful he looks in that situation. Hips opening up, chest square, left arm down the chest, and catch a load of this leg. Now he's behind the ball, he's rotating open, picture a home run hitter. And now from that situation, this front foot is gonna push up, it's gonna elevate, look the forward leg straighten, and from there it is just unload. Look at how all those angles have been released into the club. The left foot is off the ground as there's been so much upward force. So he's using the ground reaction forces, he's using all that load and unload, and he's using the movement of his lower body to absolutely slingshot this golf club around him and into the free flowing and balanced follow through. It's brisk, it's athletic, it's powerful, it's one to learn from. One of the things players have started to do in order to hit the ball faster is they make their backswings faster. You see the really hard practice swing Fitzpatrick does and how fast his backswing is. Something called tour tempo. These guys know if they can speed up their backswing, they can most likely speed up their downswing. This one piped right in the middle of the fairway. Got another great bounce forward. Good looking tee shot here for Matt. And he proves he has enough gas in the tank. He's about 25 yards longer off the tee today than he was when he first turned pro. He's just going to have a short shot in. That should be perfect. Absolutely perfect. Does seem to be in control of his game. It's four under for the par threes this week. Aggressive indeed. Fitzpatrick puts the pressure on Trev. What a brilliant shot. Here is Matt Fitzpatrick with a medium iron in hand, trying to swing a little baby draw in there. And because of that, he's gonna have the ball slightly farther back in his stance. That creates a nice environment here where you can see how down his left arm into the golf club, it almost looks like a straight line. From there, you're gonna see the little hip toggle, you know, that little forward press the trigger as he starts the swing into motion. So taking him away, there's the movement of the hips, no forward press in the hands, and then the hips guide the backswing. No manipulation of the club whatsoever. Something to look out for over here, little buckle in the left arm. You don't have to keep that arm ramrod straight. We've talked about it before, but you can see there the slight cupping in those hands at the top. That's fine because throughout this all, you see how that cup wrist still manifests here in a club face that is slightly closed. That's because of that strong left hand grip.
Now from there, you're gonna see Matt unwind with a core. We're gonna take him down to contact and watch how the eye line stays behind the ball. That is what great golfers do. They unwind, they move forward, but they never give up that eye line. Because if you start to slide forward or rotate too much, you can alter the path of the swing. Now from there, we're gonna take Matt to about three quarters in the follow through. Now the great Jackie Burke once said, right about there, Jackie Burke once said that the crossing over the forearms and the follow through put the punch in the golf shot. Look at our right arm is rotated over left arm. Look how left arm is folding in behind that over there. That's a beautiful place for all golfers to strive because if you've got a sense of the chicken wing and that left elbow is buckling in the opposite direction, you're going to slow the club face down. Yeah, Matt, you can see how he swung into there, the arms are crossing over, the glove arm, the left arm is folding, and from there, he's accelerated energy to the club head so he can just follow it through into a free-flowing, balanced follow-through. Beautiful action there from Matt Fitzpatrick. A beautiful iron shot from long range by Matthew Fitzpatrick. And he knew he hit a good iron there. How about this shot right here? Are you kidding? Fitzpatrick from the shortstop, just a lot more confidence in the precision you can put on this ball. And it falls. Fitzpatrick with a two there at the third. That looks good. Oh, oh. had the look, didn't it? It sure did. Excellent. Looks like it's gonna be a full rip with a nine iron straight down wind. Very high and just left of it. Oh, not that much. Bounce forward. It's right at it. Keep going. Harper Town is the family paradise. Here is Fitzpatrick with a lofted wedge in hand. Now he wants to flat this golf ball, so you'll notice how the ball's in the center of the stance and the hands are slightly ahead of the club face. That's going to deal off the face. That's a beautiful model to play from because too often I see golfers with a golf ball too far forward and if they want to deal off the club face, they have to get the hands too far out in front of their body. That creates swing path and certainly contact issues. Matt's beautifully square. Matt is ready to go from this situation. So as he sweeps away, you'll see a little trigger in the body. The movements will be a little more fine, not as drastic as what they were in the full swing, but you can see the elements to Matt Fitzpatrick are still there. He's still got some of that cupping in the lead wrist. He's still got a good windup of the middle. He's still got that stable right leg that he's turned around. But most importantly to me, is he's built a situation here where if you imagine he was standing inside of a doorway, you see how he's reaching out into the top right-hand corner for him of the doorway. That ensures some stretch, some width in the arms, because if the arms are wide, you will create an environment where the swing of the club is more shallow and hence the distance control, spin, and contact are enhanced. So now as we start him down, you'll see the hips lead, he turns around the head, the arms swing down way more wide than he is with a driver. And right there, just beautiful alignment of left arm, club, down the left side, eyes behind the ball. That is perfect. Now remember, in the previous video of the medium iron shot, we saw the crossing over of the arms, the Jackie Burke-ism. Watch as Matt goes through midway into the follow through. Notice how much there the forearms have crossed over. If you struggle with undercut wedges or slices, aim for that. Allow the forearms to rotate. Allow the trailing arm to cross over, to put some punch into the shot. Watch this through contact. Head stable, body unwinding, releasing in the arms. So everything's taken care of. So now it's as simple as striking, rotating, body and forearms, and then following through into a balanced, uninterrupted, Beautiful follow through. A follow through that signaled another beautiful wedge shot. Fitzpatrick, see, cross handed. It's Look a good way that. to practice. I saw VJ Singh do this. Is Look it? at that. I mean, that is a US Open champion for <laughs> too. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It works for him. <laughs> Playing quickly as usual, organized. Oh, that's organized. Another one in there tight. 
quick tempo that Fitzpatrick has, a little lower ball flight. And beautifully done. Beautiful shot. Very inviting hole location. That ball's flighted down nicely. Man of his caliber, Will, you would expect this to be quite close. But he did it perfectly. <laughs> Matthew Fitzpatrick, who spent some time here in Chicago as a college student, won the U.S. Amateur, but played one year at Northwestern. A mighty lash out of the high stuff. Oh! <laughs> that is not something you could count on here. <laughs>